Hello students, welcome back to today's session. Hope uh, the previous introductory part of uh, Euclid's geometry was clear. Now to have a short recap what we have covered in that session, we have uh, learned about the Greek mathematicians and Indian mathematicians, what exactly is Euclid's geometry and how it has been derived, why the necessity of the scale in the picture and what were his axioms and postulates. Along with that, we have also seen the basic definition of theorem and few more concepts were discussed there. Now let's uh, um, keep our discussion further. Now, what uh, was the conclusion yesterday? Uh, after deducting, after seeing all the observations of uh, Euclid's, now, it was being observed that using his axioms and postulates, he has uh, round about uh, proved 465 uh, theorems which were totally based on his axioms and uh, postulates. Along with that, uh, he, the statements that were proved uh, by him were uh, also called theorem. And uh, to revise with what was axiom, axioms was a universal truth which was accepted in every field of maths and uh, regarding the postulate we have already discussed that postulates are limited only to uh, extent of geometry. Things which are related to geometry were called as postulates. Now we today in today's session we will be discussing about very small concepts which are already known to you. In short you can say that we are just uh, uh, taking a recap of that with a deep uh, thinking and which will be used for us to solve our exercise and day-to-day -day problems. So what are those? Let's start. Now to continue, Euclid's also uh, discovered many things regarding geometry and further as I told you. Now to go in deep, along with Euclid's and his mathematicians, they just took their surrounding as an example and they tried to discover many more things based on that. So what was the first conclusion from where they started was expected to be what is solid. See we know we have already learned about what is solid. Solid is nothing but it's uh, a solid has a shape, size, position and can be moved from one place to another. Now, we know what is solid. Solid is nothing but uh, an object to coming so this extent, many more things were as uh, you know, in the axiom it's uh, already discuss, discussed that things were universally being accepted and it was not at all possible to give definition for every uh, word to be used in geometry. Like if we say what is uh, area, to explain what is area, we know that uh, it can be deducted, uh, we can find the area by multiplying some of the dimensions. Like if you are talking about uh, square, you need to multiply the sides to find the area. What is area? Area is a plain uh, place which is being enclosed by some boundaries. Clear? Now, what are, what, uh, how to find the boundaries? We had a formula that we need to uh, add all the uh, sum of the boundaries and we will get the perimeter and for area the area the place the region enclosed enclosed inside the boundary were called as area so there were a few more points regarding which we accepted it without any definitions and without any uh, proof of that and those were called as postulates so the first thing there was solid what is a solid See, if you see what is a solid, like it is very difficult to practically explain what is solid. We can uh, show by some examples and all. The same was done here. Like 
uh, it's already explained. It has a shape, size, position, and can be moved from one place to another. So, for example, if we talk of, see, this is a solid. Marker is a solid. If we take other example, see this small duster is again a uh, solid. Now, we will be using this duster for the further definitions. Like, see, <coughs> what else was uh, being discovered? That was boundaries of surface are curved or the ED curve or straight line then it's uh, solid its boundaries are called surface then now Boundary, its boundaries are called surface. Boundaries of surface are called straight line and line ends at a point. Yeah. So, what we have seen is, we have seen solid, we have seen surface, we have seen a line and we have seen a point. Clear? Now, as I have shown you the example of the object like duster. See this is a solid. It can, it is having a shape. It has a size, rectangular size. It, its position can be determined. Apart from that, you can move this duster from one place to another. So based on this, we can say this is a solid. See, another one, one more duster is there. Where we have the shape different. It has, it can be moved, it is having a shape, its position can be determined and it can be moved from one place to another. Now what exactly I want to explain here is, see the, we know already that the upper part is called the plane. These are its boundaries. Now boundaries are, they may have a curve or a straight line. So here slight curve is there. Here also a slight curve you can see in the boundaries or the straight line. So what does it say that the boundaries of a surface can be a curve or a straight line. See we know all these things from our uh, previous classes also and we are just revising it with a deep uh, thinking so that we can uh, build our base for the introduction part. Now we know that the line ends at the point. See. This boundary is a straight line. Line, it is ending at a point. Now this point is nothing but the ends of this object are ending at point. We do call them at vertices but here we are talking only about the points. So the things which need to be understood is solid is a three dimensional object. Three dimensional means a solid is having length, breadth and height. When we talk of a surface, surface is nothing but two dimensional. When we talk of line, it is one dimensional and this has zero dimension. Clear? Now dimension is clear. What is dimension? Dimension means the um, sides which we are talking about. So, solid has three dimensional, surface is two dimensional, line is one dimensional and point is uh, zero dimension. We will be going deep on this and we will be seeing what were the assumptions made there. It was very difficult to go for every uh, definition. So, certain things which were concluded are like if we talk of what is a point. See, this is a plane surface. A dot on this plane is nothing but a point. What we know about a point? See, we can draw n number of points on this. Clear? Now these all points, how to distinguish among them? We need to notate them with a capital letter. Remember point is always being notated by capital letter. You cannot use small letters 
for no. If you are saying this is A, no, this is wrong. So these are points. We already knew about this, na? what is point? We are just recurring uh, what we have learned so far. Now these collection of points makes line. Now second concept we are discussing about, see we have discussed about point. Second we are discussing about line. What is line? Line has two arrows means the arrow shows that this can be extended on both sides. Clear? And this line is collection of many points. Now, what is this? This is a ray. This is a line. This is a ray which has one end point and can be extended in only one direction. Now what else we can learn? We have learned that see this has two end points. This is a line segment. Line segment is nothing but part of line. Clear? With AB as notation. Now this can be this is a line notation L. This is a ray OA. This is a line segment AB here with two end points. So these were a few things which we already knew. And what is the point? We don't have exactly a particular fixed definition to be followed. For line, we cannot show a line. We can represent it on a plane. Same way, ray, line segment. Now, the next comes what are collinear points and what are non-collinear points. When we talk of collinear points, see these all are points. Now, these points cannot be called as collinear points. So, when we join these points, the everything goes zigzag. Clear? So, we say that these points are not collinear ones. But when we have, when we join few points and we get a straight line, we say that they are collinear points. So, the points P, Q, R, S and T are collinear points and these A, B, C, D, E, F, G are non-collinear points. With the figure we can understand that when we join points and we get a straight line, we call those points as collinear points and on joining the points, if we are not getting a straight line, we call the given points as non-collinear points. What else can be concluded? A line has no fixed length. Same with ray, no length. Line segment has length. Fixed. Apart from that, what we know is OA is not equal to AO. Why it is so? OA is not equal to AO because O is the starting point and if you say this one here you can see that A is the starting point which is not true. So OA is, ray OA is not equal to AO. We need to start the ray from the end point. Now, whereas line AB, if we talk of dimension of AB, it is equal to BA. Because the distance from the point A to B or from B to A is going to be the same. Now, these were the very few concepts which we have seen, uh, already been seen. More than this, we will be discussing about uh, parallel lines, intersecting lines. Now, what are parallel lines?
we know line line in a plane which this is a plane line this is again a line let this be n this be m again we will have this line n and another line p now using these two figures we will be understanding what are parallel lines and what are intersecting lines and line a and line m see even if we extend them to the uh, extreme ends we are not going to get a common point so a line where no common points are between two lines if there is no common point and the distance between them remains the same throughout we say that l is parallel to m but here in case of n and p we can see there is a common point o and this o is also called the point of intersection and we say that n line l is line n and line p are intersecting at o and o is nothing but the point of intersection of line Now what is the third type of line? We can also go for that, and that is congruent line. See, these all are line P, Q, R. Three lines are there. This is P, this is Q, and this is R. Let this be S. Now these all points are meeting at. O, the point of intersection is common at O, so we say that line P, Q, R, and S are congruent. So, with the help of example only, we are able to understand the definition in a deeper way, and we will be uh, seeing what we have learned so far. See, concepts which are we have learned so far are already been known to you, as I told you in the beginning only. We are just taking a short recap of this. and uh, recap is taken now we will be seeing that uh, what we have learned we have learned about a point we learned about line we have learned about ray we have learned about line segment then we have learned about parallel lines intersecting line and congruent lines and we have discovered certain points regarding them now what was a common uh, conclusion made by euclides now we will be seeing it now what we have seen here is a point is that which has no part no part in the sense no length a line is breadthless length the ends of a line are point we already discussed these things a straight line is a line which lies in the sea with the point it on itself a surface is that which has length and breadth only and the edges of a surface are line the plane surface which lies eventually with the straight line lies on itself now we'll see some more which points which we have discussed so far now the axioms on lines Are. a line contains infinitely many points so if we talk of a this straight line this is a plane put as a plane plane is a collection of many points so when we are drawing a line the number of points appearing on this which are in a same line also called collinear ones it has many points right okay? if we try to draw with a dot dots which are very closer to each other forms a line here yeah? so it contains infinitely many points through a given point infinitely many lines can be drawn yes exactly see this is a point you can draw a line like this you can draw a line like this you can draw a line like this already uh, we have seen also 
one and only one line can be drawn to pass through two given points. See, this is A and this is B. Two points. We can draw, we can join these two points, isn't it? See, we may join it like this. If it is given to a small child, the child may draw, join it like this or if this is A, this is B, the child may use like this also and the third way of joining this is clear. Now to join this, this is not a line, we know. This is a curve or you can say it as a curve line. Even this is a curve. This exactly is a line. So we can join these two points with only one and one line. So this is what one and only one line can be drawn to pass through the two given points A and B. Now let's move further. Now let's come to the theorem 1 where we are going to prove that two distinct lines cannot have more than one point in common. So when we are proving a theorem, the theorem proof may have, will have three basic parts. Now the first one, theorem will be there. Apart from theorem, three basic parts. Based on the sentence, we are going to find what is given, then what is to be proved and what is exactly the proof. This is as same as we were solving word problems. So first was word problem, then what is given we used to write and then what we need to find, like. If uh, the sum of two numbers are given to be 23 and one number is 2, what is the other? So what we used to do? We used to understand, mathematically represented, that sum of two numbers means dash plus dash is equals to 23. Among the one of the dash, it was given as 2. Now we need to find x, the third, second one. So what we used to do? Either we used to write the second number or we used to assume the second number to be x. Similarly, we are doing the same and then we proceeded with 2 plus x is equal to 23 and then we have solved and got the value of the second number. Similarly, here also, given, what is given? Given that two distinct lines. So, there must be two lines. L and M are two lines. Have more than one point in common. We need to prove that two distinct lines has more than one point in common. Till one point in common means we can have the point of intersection, but here it is two lines. So how to proceed with? We need to prove L and M cannot have more than one point. So what is given? We are just going to take opposite of that and then prove. If L and M there is no common points, we know that L is parallel to M. As per the definition previously discussed. Now. Taking the second case, this is the first part and this is the second part. If L is not parallel to M, in case L is not parallel to M, then what it is? Then if L is not parallel to M, this is line L and this is line L which is not parallel. This is L and this is M. See, we can see that they are not parallel. Then we take two points P and Q, two distinct points. Now. If two points are there, P and Q, that means common for both L and M. L will be having point P and point Q and M will also have point P and point Q. But if we have two distinct points P and Q, it is uh, very clearly seen in the previous uh, uh, slide where we have seen that we know only one line passing through two points P and Q. Only one and one line can pass between two lines. Two, two given points, one line can pass. So, if that is true, in that case, how come P and Q be on L and M both at a time? This is not at all possible. So, we say that what is, if P and Q are on line L and they are also on line M, then we can conclude only one thing that line L and M are same line because 
Only one line can be drawn passing through two given points. If we assume that this is true, then what we have seen is wrong because two distinct lines. So this is a contradict to what we have assumed, which is given over here. So therefore, L and M are distinct lines. If L and M are distinct lines, they cannot have two points common to them. So let's move to the second here. So to summarize now, what we have concluded, uh, what we have done so far, concluded is uh, points. We have discussed about points. We have, we do took a recap of the previous session with points. Afterwards, line, line segment, ray, important conclusion, and theorem one. Now we will be ending our session for today, and we will meet in the second session with theorems continuation and some problems based on the axioms and postulates. So thanks for now. Keep revising the concept which we have discussed in this video.